Today I wanted to show you my final version of the desulfator circuit I built. Instead of using proto boards or any of the little project boards to build one, I've actually gone ahead and actually built a circuit board for it. Makes it a lot easier, much cleaner, and in a much smaller area. So it works out really well. I'm going to turn the camera around. I'm going to show you how to do it real quick, and then I'm going to jump onto the computer and show you how to order your own boards because these are now open source. Anyone can order these on your own without having me in the middle of it and you can build your own desulfators a hundred times easier than trying to do it on a bunch of proto board. Okay, so first we have a blank circuit board here and hopefully I silk screened enough so everyone can easily figure out which way the parts go in and on the back of it basically just has the version number on it. This is, uh, the silk screen's changed a little bit in the final version, but this gives you a general idea of exactly how it looks. And here's two examples that I've built up using it. And you can tell by the size of my hand, that's a regular size hand, I'm not exactly a bear or anything like that. They are much smaller than the first ones you've seen in a lot of my other videos. Much more compact, and they work perfectly. You got, let's put this down. You got your triple five timer and supporting circuitry for it. You've got the uh, switching MOSFET, which turns on and off. That's what does the actual pulsing. You got your two inductors laid up here, and your actual power connectors, positive, negative, directly to your battery, and your re automatic resettable fuse, and one big diode down below there. And everything works out beautifully. Comes out nice and clean. So all you have to do is make yourself up two battery cables, keep them as short as possible, and you just plug them into here and connect it up to your battery. I suggest putting this in like a little Radio Shack uh, enclosure or something like that to protect it so it doesn't short out or anything. Trust me, it does not get hot. Everything runs maybe warm to the touch if you're lucky. And so you don't need a fan on it or anything else like that. Put it in a little safe enclosure, put it on a battery, and have a good day. So now we're going to go jump over to the laptop, and we're going to go on to the top of the screen here on a screen capture. I'm going to show you exactly how to order these boards so you can um, build your own desulfators. Okay, I made this really easy for everyone so you can order your own circuit boards for the desulfator circuit. First thing you're going to do is open up your web browser and you're going to go to github.com NJ Shark Racer. Click on there and you're going to see my main project page. The only thing I have right now is the 12 volt desulfator. Click on that and here you are on the actual project page with all the different files that are listed in here and then the README. This will give you the basic information. Also break down the files for you. And if you really like this project that much, uh, right here there's a little pledgy button. If you can throw me a dollar or two, that's great. It doesn't go to pay my bills. It goes so I can play with more electronics and do more projects like this. And I appreciate anything I get. But to go ahead and order your circuit boards, go back up to the top here. And you go find this little button right here. It says download from the cloud zip. Uh, click that. Save the file to your computer. And it's already finished downloading. Close out your browser. And let's see here. Go to your download file. And here's your zip file. Double click and open it up and you'll get this one folder. Pull it on out. Inside this folder is everything that was on that GitHub. You have a parts list, which we'll show you. I broke it all down for you and these can be directly ordered from uh, newark.com. So it gives you a list of everything you need to build one desulfator. And uh, the quantity. Actually, the whole, everything has a single quantity except for the uh, one capacitor here, there's two of them. Everything else is a, uh, oh wait, no, sorry. The um, other capacitors as well, you have two of them. Everything else is a single quantity. So that makes it easy for you for the parts list so you can order the parts. Um, right here, 
This is just a picture of one of the boards I made up, so I attached that for everyone. Here's the schematic. So you can reference it if you need to. This is the original PDF or document from the Home Power Magazine uh, issue number 88 that shows you where the uh, desulfate originally came from. And we'll explain a little more in detail the uh, function of it for you. So it's a good reference for you. He has his own original parts list. It's been modified a little bit from other people and I'm using the uh, um, uh, Frontier version of it. Now here you got two uh, zip files. This one is your source file. This has all the information. If you want to edit the actual schematic and you want to modify the circuit itself, I'm using KiCad. I have no clue for the people who are using Eagle or a EDA or another version of a um, program. If it will import correctly, give it a shot. Your mileage may vary. This file right here, desulfator version 0.91.zip. Inside here is the files that get sent directly to the fabricator, whether it be OSH Park or uh, all the other companies that are around. Personally, I use OSH, OSH Park, and I'm going to show you basically how to use it now. So, let's close this out. We got that. Let's go back to our browser. It would help if I click the right button. There we go. So, let's go to OSH Park. And you're going to go, here's this first page and everything. You're going to click Get Started Now and select a file on your computer. So we're going to go back to my download directory, back into that folder right here that was in that zip, and you want this file that's only 9.8 kilobytes, the software version 0 0.91. Click on it, it's going to start processing the file and upload it to them real quick. You can add a uh, project name and description if you want to. I'm just going to leave it blank for right now. It takes anywhere usually between like 10 seconds to a minute for it to um, finish processing the file and then it'll pop up with some extra information for you. And once it's done processing, it'll fill up basically just the information from what I got from the uh, zip file and it'll show you two quick previews of what the uh, circuit board will look like when it's done. Gives you uh, detected a two layer board, gives you the dimensions of it in inches and millimeters and how much it costs to get three of them. Now you have to order three at a time with this guy uh, that's the minimum order and 1170 for three of these for the size of the board is actually not a half bad price. You can shop around um, click continue and it's going to give you more of an exploded view and show you exactly what it's set up for. The uh, top of the board with the silk screening and what it would look like when it's done. The bottom of the board. The bottom layer, this is the bottom layer of the copper that will stay on. And that's the solder mask. This is basically where the um, that little blue covering that protects all the copper, this is where it will not be applied. Basically all over, all over top all of the holes, which is where you do not want it. The bottom silk screen, yes it's inverted, but that's just the way it displays. It's perfectly fine. The board outline always shows a block because I always do everything in blocks. I don't do it in squares or cutouts or anything weird like that. And again, the top layer of copper, the top solder mask again, the top silk screen, which uh, hopefully I did it good enough that everyone can understand exactly where everything goes and which orientation. And the drill file, which is also included, so this way you actually have holes. We had to include that. Uh, next, you approve and continue. Uh, you'll start your project. You probably have to create an account with him, which is extremely easy. It's not a big deal. And he accepts uh, payment through PayPal. I'm not going to click approve and continue because I really don't feel like ordering another three right now. So, again, that's basically how it works. And if you have any questions, let's see here. I don't have it up here right now, but go ahead and click comments down below. And um, thank you.